Alles is goed? Ik zie geen knikken. Ja,
recently, I recently made my idiot papers, so to speak, digital. But I make pictures of my uh, <laughs> of my idiot papers, so I I scribble and I make a lot of mess. I make a picture of it, and it makes sense to me. <laughs> so, for this one, I need my uh, scribbling. <laughs> yeah, I'm so modern. <laughs>
Polish mouse, they come from Holland. <laughs> Dutch singers in the world. It's called Gerard van Maasappels. Aha, uh -huh, ja. Het is weer een Brabants, zei voor de Nederlandse. Well, hij yeah, is very famous in Holland. In Holland. So, but um, he is a little bit older. When I was young, when I was a kid, um, this uh, we had an album uh, of him, a few albums of him, and uh, my parents had. So, and I used I used to listen to. And there was a one song in particular I loved from this album. Um, and it's kind of a melancholic story about um, a woman who lives in a, a village and she's a little bit old. And, and I know every village and every city has, has those people, or at least one, <coughs> that are a bit old and a bit you know, out of the ordinary and they drink too much and they are a bit weird and everybody really understands them. But they are there and they make kind of life really but more colorful, you know, because they are not like, like we are. So um, the song is about a lady. Um, but you know, we, I grew up in a village called St. Mies and uh, <laughs> it's not so far away from here. <clears throat> and um, uh, we had a man in our village like that. And actually this man lived in my street. <laughs> and he he used to have um, animals uh, behind his house, so he had like cages with pigs and rabbits and, and chicken, and they had lots of. But I loved to go there. I always went there uh, when I was young. Um, and he was in my in my believeness, he was <laughs> very old. Um, so he must have been like sixty, whatever. And he also drank. He drank so much that the company who, like the brewer company, they would every weekend pass by his house with the truck and stack up the crates of beer in his hallway. And it would take him a week to drink it. And they'd come back. So that's how much he drank. And he always smelled like beer. But I loved, I loved going there. And we would sit on the kitchen table and he would give me like um, tea and, um, and uh, yeah, I don't, I can't do tea, but, <laughs> All the Dutch people know what I'm talking about. They're horrible, right? Yeah, it's not. It's like they say it's chocolate, but it's not. It's really good. So, but I he did like for years and years. I got tea in the good shape, and, and it was awful. But I love, I love coming in. And I don't know. I can't really recall what we were talking about because. What do, what do people talk about when they're like, uh, I don't know, 12 and then 65? So I, I probably talked a little bit like school or whatever. But then again, so I was there and I also uh, fed um, his, uh, his pigs. I would give them food and I would pet them. And, uh, so I loved it. But sometimes Willem, his name, um, he was so drunk. In the night he would feed his uh, animals. And then we'd go to sleep, but then he was so drunk that he let the cages open. <laughs> and then in the night, and it happened so many times in the night, the pigs would wander around the streets. <laughs> and there was one guy across from Willem, exactly across from Willem, the most neat and tidy guy ever <laughs> lived there. So he would, so the pigs, of course, they went out of their cage and they go straight to his garden. <laughs> And make like a huge mess. So this, and then you know, of course, you wake up in the morning. And there's like lots of uh, racket going on in the streets. So there's never a dull moment with Willem. <laughs> but of course, one day he passed away because you know people like that don't. Well, sometimes they do, but they really don't really get very old because he was not a very healthy man. But um, he was colorful and he was nice, and I loved him very much. So this song, I loved it. And I've been listening to it uh, all my life, and I'm tr I'll try to play it now. It's called Sis for Milk. And now I talk so much, I have to concentrate. <laughs>
life. <laughs> so, okay, so I do one more. Then we have a little break, a little beer, or a cup of coffee, whatever you want. Cigarette outside, I don't know. <laughs> then we come back. We do some more, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
And it was uh, 10 o'clock in the morning and I had just done a gig the night before, so it was a bit like this. <laughs> and um, and uh, I didn't eat yet. And, um, and uh, so I listened to his story and then he, he rushed off. He came back with a cup of coffee. And he said, yeah, it's for you. And so he bought me a cup of coffee. And then he rushed off again. And I was, I stood up and meaning to tell him like, I don't drink coffee. <laughs> But I couldn't, because he was so nice to me, you know? And so I thought, okay, but I, okay, so I don't say this, but what I do? So I had to drink the cup of coffee. And uh, so I drank it, out of politeness, and I drank the whole thing in one go, because I thought, <laughs> let's just be done with it. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, it was like, <laughs> And then I understood. The meaning, the effect, the meaning of why like millions of people in all over the world drink coffee. It's just the effect, right? It's not tasty at all. It's just waking you up. So I was like, ah. <laughs> and uh, from that moment on, I uh, sometimes drink coffee when I have to be somewhere and all of a sudden be sharp because I'm not sharp by nature. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it works. It works like a train. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, coffee. I once wrote a song that I don't drink of. There's, I have another coffee story. <laughs> there was this one time at Bandcamp. <laughs> there was a one time uh, I worked with somebody, another polite story. I worked with somebody for like a few years and we made music. It was always like overseas and he's in America and I was here. Blah, blah, blah. We did a lot of music together. So he started sending me presents for, um, for Christmas and when my son was born. He, he sent me like a huge stuffed animal and it's like, and then he sent me once Christmas, he sent me this like a huge box full of coffee. <laughs> and um, it was um, like coffee from all over the place, like expensive shit, you know? So I thought, what do I do? Because, you know, in Holland, you must know, people are so honest. So for us, it's natural to say, oh, I'm sorry, I don't drink coffee. Do you want a bag or, you know? We have, we have nothing with like, okay, I'll just, you know, uh, whatever, keep it in the cupboard for 12 years and whatever. <laughs> so I wanted to write an email like, oh man, things must, must be really expensive, but you know, I don't drink coffee. And then I thought, that's not polite, is it? So I wrote a song <laughs> for him <laughs> on the computer and with the, like a drum beat, with the, like, the keyboards and the whole thing, and the whole lyric was, I don't drink coffee. <laughs> so I sent him the song. I've never heard anything. <laughs> so, yeah, we kept on working together for a few years, but I just never had a reaction. But I also know people from the US are, are very polite, you know, they're very much like, uh, just don't say anything, just lie to me, you know, and just say you like the coffee, but I just, I did the total opposite, so. I don't know, maybe you uh, didn't like, well, I need a song, right? That's nice, isn't it? So it's polite, impolite, politeness, I don't know. I'll, I'll think about it. Okay, let's do a song. Beautiful one. <laughs> Ah. Uh -huh. 
the world's messy version ever. <laughs> so, okay. Ah. Bruce makes it. Again, he may sing along. Before that, 
when you do the song is how can you not read it? <laughs> and so I come from the south and that show is in Amsterdam, so you have to kind of drive uh, a long way. And I was in traffic, so I was late. And there was like they have the rehearsals and then you have to go uh, on the on television live. And the rehearsals I was like rushing and I just made the rehearsals. And we just just like a rushed rehearsal, like, yeah, 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 okay, we get a sound, okay, go upstairs, you do the makeup. And then with all the turmoil, I thought, just when they said to me, okay, we have to go down now, you wait for the show, and then and there's like a commercial, and then you have to sit, and you have to sit through the whole show, and then in the very end, it's your turn. So I go downstairs, and then I realize, oh shit, I didn't think about how I'm gonna do my minute, because there's a song of three minutes. Then I have to show it, but I have to make like like a good like a tension bow we call it. So you have the beginning and I like a, a crescendo and an end. Blah, blah. And I was thinking, oh my god! And then I sit in the show and I, I keep thinking like for an hour long. I think like, okay, so what do I do? Okay, then I, I sing this and then I sing. And what do I, How do I end it? And I was so nervous. And then they called me on the table and we, you know, with the two. I'm going to you all the time, because you saw it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm seeking for support. <laughs> and uh, so I sit there, this will become a long story, but I sit there and they call my name and I have to sit on the desk, on the table. And another thing is that Matthijs van Nieuwkerk, the host, is a really nice guy. <laughs> I like him very much. And it's also nerve wracking to, to look him in the eye. And he's asking me all these questions, and I just answer without knowing what I'm saying. <laughs> so I was thinking about this chord, and then this song, and then this, and then. And um, he says, Okay, so give it away. And, I and then I thought, Okay, well then I'll end with this chord. And then I do the whole thing. And my husband was there, and he was above in the green room. And I thought, Oh, okay, I got through it. That's what I thought. And I don't think it was really bad, so I thought. So I went upstairs. My husband was super critical, and he always he's very Dutch. He'll always say what he thinks. <laughs> very honest guy. So I go like my knees are still shaking. I go, and I said to Rob, "So how was it?" And he's like, "This is really good." And I'm like, oh. <laughs> And it showed because that show did a lot for me in Holland. And then you guys <laughs> came to my show, and I was touring with the with the with the band, and it was like a heavy show. Did a heavy show, and uh, and I could really pick out people you uh, with sweaters on <laughs> because all my audience is like uh, metal shirts or whatever, guys with makeup, and then people like you. So. So we call them uh, David Day is the name of the show, David Day Sweaters. And I saw, I saw a few people, and then they discovered me through the show, and then some of them just were kind of halfway walked out of the venue, like, oh, it's way too loud for me, this. Because <laughs> they thought that I did like acoustic shows, but anyway, long show. <laughs> so, so, does anybody have a certain time that they have to be home? <laughs>
80s. That was not for the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> I was an 80s kid because I'm, I'm quite a teen. And um, I have my uh, my aunt. My aunt is here today. Tante Bill, where are you? Excuse me. Oh, no, I just did that. That's good. Okay. <laughs> so, my aunt and my uncle are here. And I have a little story because um, when I was very, very young, I used to um, sleep over at uh, Dr. Bilge's house a lot. And so, and I loved um, being at her place because she uh, has small feet. <laughs> so, um, so when I was there, I was uh, yeah, so a young girl, and I would fit almost in her shoes. <laughs> so I always wear where it was in front of the mirror in the bedroom with the top of the shoes on, with the clothes on, and I was like ah, singing, you know, doing the Madonna thing and the whole thing in front of the mirror. And um, she, then she got a, then she opened up a, a boutique clothing store, and so then I was in front of the mirror with all this clothes from the shop, and uh, she was in do the whole Madonna thing. And so, so I loved being uh, in her house and under her care, and uh, she used to drive uh, the old car of my grandmother. Um, it's a duff, you know, one of those <laughs> square. It was it white? A square white car, and they want to make a lot of noise. And we used to drive. I don't know. We should go work, do groceries or whatever. And then, so there was also always one song on the radio, and uh, my aunt always said, "Sing that song. Sing that song. You have to sing it." And uh, I sang it when it was on the radio. But even if it wasn't on the radio, she said you should sing this song. You know. And for her, so I, I a lot of times I sang this. Do you remember which song it was? No, it was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> but I recently heard it uh, oh, because you always hear it on the radio. So it's a big hit, and uh, I I remember this uh, this uh, story, and I thought, uh, why not just kind of integrate it in my solo set? So it's um it's um. Broken Wings from Mr. Mister. And so Tante Dur asked me, hey, sing that song again.
God's service.
Before, before yeah. yeah, let's do the set song. Yeah. <laughs> not another story. No, no, please, no. <laughs> Scribblings. <laughs> it's actually it's really long, but the time after time. Oh. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. <laughs>
when the time we get there is like four in the morning, the meatballs are not meatballs anymore. <laughs> they look like extraterrestrial things from outer space. They look like unidentified floating objects, <laughs> floating in gravy. And they're like sponges, they're like <laughs> So the other day, one of our guitar players, Joris, he took a meatball and he cut it open and it was like lots of mayonnaise. And he, we had played, you know, a long day. He was tired, but also hungry. So I ate one and he ate one really fast. And uh, it turned to me and says, Anneke, I don't feel so good. <laughs> I said, I know yours because the meatball, man. It's so anyway, so, but you know, something else, like a, a bottle of water, <laughs> Snickers, I like it. So if you buy a CD, I have money for a bottle of water. <laughs> okay, so that was my sales rep. I'll sing you a song, if you join me, that would be great. And I'll see you later in the lobby lounge or whatever it's called. Okay. And again, thank you so much for being here.